We will have uh, distinguished panelists here. Alberto Baco Bage from Partnership uh, for Modern Puerto Rico will be moderating this panel. We'll have Manuel Lopez Zabrana from uh, DLA Piper. Jaime Morgan Stube from Dorado Beach Resort Development. And Margaret Pena Juvelier from Puerto Rico, Sotheby International Realty. Please, Alberto, uh, introduce yourself a little bit and uh, panel, uh, fellow panelists, please. Good morning, almost go, good, af no, good afternoon. Uh, we have a great panel here um, and very different of what we have, you have seen this morning. Puerto Rico is an emerging uh, country. Puerto Rico is very unique. Puerto Rico is part of the United States. And Puerto Rico has developed a movement where we are not only attracting people for our tax advantages, but we are attracting because of our unique place to do business and our unique place to live. Uh, this panel, we will try to convey our lifestyle, our investment opportunities, our real estate, and also our legal framework, why we have unique opportunities in Puerto Rico. Uh, so I would like to begin with, uh, with putting you in perspective of the real estate, the developments, uh, the general framework of tax laws that, that we have in Puerto Rico. Please remember that we will be here the two days. There's no way we can put in 35 minutes all that we want to say. Feel free to ask questions. There's also a, a pen drive uh, of, uh, prepared by uh, Grant Thornton, uh, Kevin Grant Thornton in Puerto Rico. And there's all the laws all the details of how to do business in Puerto Rico. So we will not be entering in, in, in a lot of detail. Uh, we would like to begin with Jaime Morgan Stube. Jaime used to be a Secretary of Economic Development. He has been president of a big development a project in the east coast of Puerto Rico, Palmas del Mar, an integrated community, and now he's president for the real estate development arm in Dorado uh, of one of the biggest uh, development groups in Puerto Rico, Prisa Group and, and Dorado Beach uh, community. So Jaime will, will make a, a slight presentation and then we will discuss, uh, as I said, legal and lifestyle uh, issues. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here in this uh, wet and cold more, uh, day in New York City. Uh, we do like once in a while to leave our tropical island and come and get some, uh, a little bit of your crispy uh, uh, winter uh, weather. I'm, I, I thought it was very important uh, uh, to sh run you through some slides about what's the other side of Puerto Rico. You've been exposed to a lot of negative uh, uh, news about uh, the island, not only since the issue of the debt service, uh, uh, but also since Maria. Uh, but there's another side of Puerto Rico that we wanted to share with you today. Unfortunately, technology is not working in my favor today, so we're going to have to do kind of like this kind of manually. So uh, for, next slide. Who we are, <clears throat> we're a development company. We've been in the business for a little more over 30 years, currently over 2,000 employees in our uh, different group of companies, and over a billion dollar invested uh, since uh, we started developing in Puerto Rico. Uh, it's a family uh, company, uh, but we do have institutional investors, some of which are from here in New York and Chicago. Next, please. <clears throat> in terms of Puerto Rico's opportunities, as Alberto uh, explained, we, we do have uh, a, a platform from where we can start uh, or you can start benefiting from. Tourism and visitor economy is very, uh, it's very good. It's a good platform. It's not been developed <clears throat> as it should. Uh, we're very involved, as you see, in this. I think it's a great opportunity. Manufacturing and infrastructure, even though it's a, it seems to be, or people uh, perceive it to be a sl uh, sleepy island in the Caribbean, it's not. It's a very vibrant economy. As you know, in the 50s, Puerto Rico started industrializing itself. 
the economy is now diversifying more into tourism and service sector, but it has a, a good base of manufacturing, per particularly in the medical device and pharmaceutical industry. And uh, you will hear quite a bit today uh, and tomorrow about the institutional or in the Individual Investors Act, Act 22, and the Export Service Act. It has been very successful in the uh, last few years in attracting investors from, Port from the U.S. to Puerto Rico to live as residents and to provide services. A lot of hedge fund managers and uh, a lot of internet marketing, now blockchain. Uh, also, investors are moving down to benefit from these acts. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm amazed. I mean, I, I just closed a deal uh, a couple months ago to a very young, successful Wall Street-type blockchain investor, paid $5.6 million cash for a rich reserve condo. I'm wondering what am I doing still building, uh, 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 working on, on brick and mortars. But anyway, uh, we're very happy to have uh, this type of investors coming down to Puerto Rico. Next, please. Tourism, we're involved in the residential resort, master plan communities, and tour tourism industry because we believe it's, it's a, a growing uh, segment in Puerto Rico has been underutilized. Next. Uh, for every, uh, for every uh, 10 direct, uh, excuse me, for every room, there's 10 direct or indirect jobs to be created. Uh, with only 20,000 new rooms, we would generate a, a total of 200,000 jobs. We're working in that direction, as you'll see, uh, as we develop uh, new hotels in Puerto Rico. Next, please. We have, as a company, have chosen two nodes of concentration of development excellence. So we say this, we want to create cities of excellence or neighborhoods of excellence. One is San Juan and the other is Dorado. Next. In Dorado, uh, we have been developing what used to be the Lawrence Rockefeller Rock Resort, Dorado Beach, since the uh, late uh, 90s. It's become a resort res residential community with hotel components and uh, full-time residents. Next, please. Act 22, which I mentioned before, has been very important in terms of the uh, growth in Dorado. Uh, these are grants that have been issued. The, the law was passed in 2012. As of 2017, there were 1,369 grants uh, approved. As of October 11th, there's an additional 487 grants. These, again, these are individual investor a tax decrease. Uh, Nolan will touch on that uh, in a few minutes. It provides great tax incentives on passive income and capital gain for those of you who have, who have not lived in Puerto Rico for the last five years and decided to move down. Next. Dorado Beach is a resort community. Please. Next. As you see, this is what uh, speaks for itself. In 2012, the Investors Act was, uh, Individual Investors Act was, was approved. We opened, coincidentally, the Ritz Reserve, Ritz Carlton Reserve Hotel, and started developing Ritz Carlton branded uh, residences in, in the resort, as well as others. And you can see the growth that that has brought in our real estate sales. See, this is divided by different projects within the resort. Uh, we've been averaging around 78, uh, 68 to $70 million in sales in the resort since with homes uh, from $4 million to $15.3 million, which we did with uh, Margaret Juliet from Sotheby's, a client of hers. Next. This is kind of a master plan of Dorado. At, this is the Dorado Town, Dorado Beach Resort, expansions of our facilities, uh, JW Marriott Future Hotel. Uh, we break ground uh, next year. Uh, and this is all part of an integrated master plan community uh, plan that we are negotiating or discussing and presenting to the government of the municipality of Dorado. Next, please. <clears throat> this is the resort as it is basically today, developed with some future development along the way. This is the JW Marriott, the Rich Carlton Reserve on the north. Everything else is residential uh, uh, components. Next. A visual idea of the quality of what we've been building, developing, and uh, selling in, in Dorado. Next, please. Uh, this is our examples of the residential. Uh, the house on the left is part of the house that I just mentioned. This was closed in February of this year for $15.3 million. Next. Next, please. This is the J. Dolly Marriott uh, Hotel, which we break ground uh, in January. We do use uh, private equity, institutional investors, uh, commercial banking 
and other type of debt in these developments. Go ahead. This is more of the amenities that we need to continually start de you know, develop and create to uh, make the lifestyle uh, up to par to what you people like you, high net wealth, wealth are used to. Please. DB Market and DB Hub uh, uh, will be a WeWork space within the resort. DB Market, a small, high-end, deli-type uh, market. Sabana so Dorado is a residential resort in the uh, half a million to $800,000 a, a price point. Uh, we, the importance of Sabanera is for mo mostly for the local uh, uh, community, but we built uh, a very uh, important educational institution, TASIS, which is the American School in Switzerland. It's affiliated to that uh, school. It uh, goes from uh, pre-K to uh, 12th grade, uh, very uh, very well, uh, a good reputation uh, and placement in U.S. universities. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Again, so, so to provide uh, good quality of life, you need the great parks. We call Dorado Beach a great park. We have the great education through Tassis. And now in, in, in December, we break ground uh, on a 130-bed private room only uh, hospital affiliated to a very reputable hospital in the U.S. Next. Our next note of, uh, of development of excellence is San Juan. San Juan has incredible opportunities, underutilized, uh, underplanned, which we uh, are contributing by, go ahead, please, um, by creating more, more hospitality product and more entertainment. <clears throat> Puerto Rico has one of the shortest stays, a, a average stays in, in the industry, as you see. Uh, this is where we are today. We need to improve the experience of our visitors so that that uh, uh, translates into growth, please. So we're, great. we're calling this the Nuevo San Juan. The Nuevo San Juan, uh, the plan is to develop this area in the, what is called the Isla Grande, Isla Grande area. Right now there's a small civil airport and uh, a, car a cargo as well as cruise ship uh, piers which need to be replace, removed, uh, move somewhere else to be able to develop this. Next. We need to improve the experience. It already, there's some there, not at the quality of what people like you would expect. We're moving aggressively with the government of San Juan and the state government to develop and plan uh, this, and uh, the redundancy master plan to improve the, the, the experience. Go ahead. We can like go quickly through these. Go ahead, thanks. That's some of the idea, the concept of what we want to uh, develop there. The point here is, go ahead. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities in Puerto Rico in the tourism development area uh, that are underexploited. This is just an example of what we do. This is a Hyatt House, Hyatt Place. If you've been see seeing these hotels, they're very boring, they're uh, not unattractive. We've changed the concept. This is in the convention district. It's now fun, go ahead, modern. Go ahead, modern look, facilities, et cetera. District Live, this is based on the concept of LA Live, if you've uh, seen it, have been in LA. It's a $150 million project already underway with an ADLOF hotel and uh, what, what we like to call a smaller scale Times Square uh, under one roof, go ahead. It's gonna have restaurant venues, show venues, nightclubs, uh, even a, uh, a zip line that goes through the, go ahead, through the atrium a 6,000 amphitheater, the Adelot Hotel, okay. a lot of entertainment, a lot of energy. Go ahead. Please. That's already, already under construction. Again, people may have thought, well, you know, Puerto Rico is through a financial dire straits. Uh, you were affected by Zika, you were affected by Maria. We believe in Puerto Rico, I think it's great opportunities. Uh, we're putting your skin in, in, the, in, the, in the game, uh, and we uh, encourage uh, you all to consider and, and, and put Puerto Rico in your radar scope, be it for visit or for investment. Go ahead, please. This is the came on Bloomberg. This is the new the new San Juan uh, that I mentioned. Go ahead, please. Anyway, so uh, the point is, I wanted to just uh, share with you what we've been doing in Puerto Rico. We truly believe in the economy is going to grow. We truly believe in, in the Puerto Rican uh, uh, 
uh, people. We, are, we believe it or not, we were born and raised there. Uh, have a, a great enthusiasm. Uh, we think that great things are happening. Maria had it was a, was bad for us, but at the same time created a new platform, a, a new canvas from where to start. There's great opportunities and energy, for example, as well, uh, particularly. So uh, we encourage you to please consider us in in your new uh, in your next visit or in your uh, uh, next investment. Thank you. Thank you, Jaime. Please remember, Puerto Rico, no IRS, but we have the FBI. It's a safe place, and we have unique attributes as to the way the US citizens are taxed. Um, Margaret Juvillier, she spent most of her life in New York. She moved to Puerto Rico and understood very well what it is all about. Puerto Rico is understood that it is not only attracting capital by moving new residents to Puerto Rico, it's the talent, the quality of people that we are attracting. It's the technology community that is moving to Puerto Rico. So Margaret, tell us a little bit about your experiences uh, with the real estate market in Puerto Rico, with the education community, uh, with everything that you see when a, a person just begins the relocation process. Thank you, Alberto, and thank you, um, Jaime, for that presentation. For those of you who are not really familiar about all of these things that Jaime touched upon very quickly, um, Puerto Rico really is a land of opportunity. Um, as Alberto mentioned, I arrived six years ago. I came, I am born and raised in New York City. I am now a resident of Puerto Rico. My background is Puerto Rican, so obviously I have an affiliation, um, but I've had a totally different experience. Puerto Rico is a great place to live um, with all of these layers of incentives, tax incentives, which are very appealing and attractive. Many stateside people have chosen to make Puerto Rico their home. So in the last six years, and that's the amount of time that I'm there, we have been very fortunate to work with many of those considering making the move and who have made the move. So what Puerto Rico really has is a little bit of everything. Um, we're a population of approximately three million people. We have faced many challenges in the last six years, as everyone's known in the press. But I think we are past the difficult times and really looking forward to the more uh, advanced times and growth. While in my experience in the six years that I've been there, I've seen a tremendous amount of growth despite all the challenges we've faced. We've had new restaurants come, we've had a lot of industries, we've had people move who are individual investors, and everyone wants to be involved. They want to give back, they want to participate, they see the opportunity that exists on this island. And really that is the real key here, is the opportunity that exists on the island. We have great educational systems, families who have moved, who are concerned about schools, our education uh, institutions are top notch. The children graduating mostly go to Ivy League universities in the United States. Our medical schools are excellent at a fraction of the cost. Um, healthcare. We have US board certified doctors, mostly educated in the United States, again, at the fraction of a cost. So I think when you think about lifestyle, we have a little bit of everything. We have country living, we have beach communities, we have resort living, uh, we have suburban living, and there is enough to do just in terms of the lifestyle if you were someone that was a boater or fantasize about being a boater. We have communities that have everything you want for boating. If you are a kite surfer, and we, I hear this all the time, kite surfers, well, you could be 40 years old starting to kite surf. <laughs> Dorado has that. So we have a lifestyle that is unique, truly unique with, with every other comfort that you can have from the States, but on a more enhanced level because you're in the Caribbean. I truly encourage anyone who would consider looking into these tax incentives and all of the offerings that the island has available to everyone, I suggest you take a look at that because it will be an experience of a lifetime. 
those people that have moved have said they would not change a day. The children fall in love from the moment they arrive, and there's nothing to complain. We have perfect weather, beautiful environment, and a culture that is rich in kindness, love, unity. I think everyone has seen that from the results of Maria. We've seen how the community and the island has grouped together to better things. And this opportunity with all of the influx of um, funds that will be coming to the island, I think that where many have described us as possibly a new Singapore, that may be a bit of an exaggeration, but our goal is to try to get to a different level. Thank you, Margaret. Um, and now we will let you know a little bit of our legal side. Uh, Manuel Lopez is a CPA and an attorney, very respected in, in Puerto Rico. Uh, and you will hear a lot about the Acts 2022. Uh, but right now, we are also at an, at an inflection point in Puerto Rico. We are dealing with our fiscal issues, and at the same time, we're getting a kind of uh, stimulus package by the fact that uh, our hurricane where makes us that we really need reconstruction. And the Congress has passed a lot of legislation uh, creating additional opportunities in Puerto Rico. Manuel, uh, will you talk, uh, uh, let us know a little bit about what is the opportunity zone uh, situation in Puerto Rico, why this legislation creates bigger opportunities in Puerto Rico than in the mainland, and, and just let us know what it is all about. Really my pleasure. Can we have this, the, the new San Juan uh, slide up there? San Juan? Yeah. While we get there, yeah, just, uh, just to give you a really general example or explanation of uh, what Puerto Rico is from a tax point of view and the new initiative for opportunity zones in Puerto Rico. For tax purposes, uh, Puerto Rico is treated for U.S. purposes as, is, as if it were a foreign country. So you can set up businesses in Puerto Rico and deal with Puerto Rico as if it were a foreign country for U.S. Uh, purposes and make the appropriate uh, tax planning. That's where sometimes Act 20 comes into play. Puerto Rico also has a Tourism Development Act that promotes uh, tourism in Puerto Rico, provides tax incentives, as well as for manufacturing. Now, Hurricane Maria passes. Puerto Rico is in a state of uncertainty in terms of its economic fiscal situation. One of the measures that Congress reacted to as a result of PROMESA was including in the new Opportunity Zone rules of the U.S. tax code, providing that basically 94.5 of Puerto Rico is an Opportunity Zone. 94.5% of the census tracts in Puerto Rico are automatically treated as opportunity zones. And if you have not heard of about the opportunity zones or rules of the U.S. tax code that were enacted last year, in essence, I'm not going to get into details, but very broadly, if you generate a capital gain and, with, and within 180 days you invest it in an opportunity zone fund, then you have the potential of deferring taxes on the U.S. side until the year 2026. And if you hold your investment in the fund for at least 10 years, from thereafter, any gain on, on the sale of your investment in the fund will not pay any, any U.S. taxes. The clue in an opportunity zone and fund investment, when you as an investor look at an opportunity zone fund as an investment alternative, is that you will look into an investment a business, a business proposition that will show to you as an investor that after 10 years, the accretion in value will be such that it makes sense to invest in that. Some number crunching that some people have done in terms of investment in Opportunity Zone funds show that the return on investment can be 200% uh, or more than a, I mean, two times more than a normal investment, taxable investment. Now, where does Puerto Rico come into play here? When you look at the 50 states, each governor nominated a number of areas within their states that are qualified opportunity zones. 
That means that a investor can invest in a fund that will invest in business assets in that area and have the potential of getting this 10-year tax benefit. The difference between Puerto Rico and other states is that the whole island, for all practical purposes, is a, is a zone, meaning that you can establish a fund, invest in Puerto Rico under the proper ozone rules, which I will not get into into detail now. But contrary to other areas of other states in which it's certain area, certain part of a city, certain part of the state which is very distressed, you can do an opportunity zone fund in San Juan, Puerto Rico and do this type of development. It's not a, an area that is in some type of borrow or anything like that. It's in the San Juan area and the rest of Puerto Rico also. But I emphasize San Juan, which for, for me in my mind is the low hanging fruit from the point of view of opportunity zone funds. And as, as we speak today, um, you know, for example, this, this project here, and again, it's a pretty good example to illustrate what I'm going about to say now. Puerto Rico is on the verge in the year 2019 to receive about a, between eight and nine billion dollars of CDB funds, CDB DR funds, to help Puerto Rico reconstruct um, its whole infrastructure because of the passage of Hurricane Maria. The government has included in its action plan with HUD the potential use of CDB money as seed capital to reconstruct infrastructure on property owned by the Puerto Rico government. When you plug in the numbers, if you have free seed capital to construct a residential property or a commercial property, hotels, with the potential of using CDB money for infrastructure costs on property owned by the government. The government has already visualized that opportunity in order to inc increase return on investments in Puerto Rico. That's another benefit when you compare Puerto Rico with a state. The possible use of CDB money in Puerto Rico to do infrastructure projects for opportunities to home fund projects is enormous. Down the road is going to be another $8 billion more. So if you're interested in a project in Puerto Rico, look at the Opportunity Zone Fund rules because the whole islands are out there. The Puerto Rico government has a huge inventory of assets that were owned by the Puerto Rico government, leased out to manufacturing companies. They're spread out through the whole island. And the other important point here is that when you think about the 10-year hole that an investor is looking into, looking at an investment that will increase in value over 10 years, Right now, the real estate values in Puerto Rico, except for the $15 million residents and this type of stuff, but throughout the island, because of the fiscal situation in which the island is, you can obtain property at very attractive values and then build on that property to create something like this. 10-year appreciation, low basis, and it's a home run. Now, from the Puerto Rico point of view, this is federal legislation telling uh, U.S. taxpayers to generate capital gains and invest in a fund, and you can create a fund to invest in Puerto Rico. Now, what Puerto Rico is doing as we speak today, Puerto Rico will be presenting legislation to cover opportunity zone operations that are not covered by the local incentives offered by tourism projects or manufacturing projects. For example, if a fund establishes in Puerto Rico a mixed residential project or constructs an office building for rental, whatever it is, under today's Puerto Rico tax rules, that operation is taxable. It does not have any tax benefits. P tax rate in Puerto Rico go up to 39%. That type of proposal, if it's done through an opportunity zone fund, will right now, under the current the law that will be approved, the max tax will be 20%, and it will enjoy a number of incentives from a property tax point of view, municipal license taxes that Puerto Rico has. And it would also provide for an expedited permitting process, which is one of our problems in Puerto Rico. So it has, it has a bundle of concepts to expedite processes, provide tax benefits, and it also tells Puerto Rico investors Listen, there are a lot of Puerto Rico investors that have their investments outside of Puerto Rico because of the problem that we have in Puerto Rico. 
from a Puerto Rico point of view, our analysis has shown that from uh, in the states, the local component of investors participating in projects at the state level is a very important factor. So this law will tell Puerto Rico investors, if you generate capital gains and invest in a fund in Puerto Rico, you can also enjoy this. It's basically a mirroring of the federal rules. Well, so this is, to... I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's in a nutshell what we can say um, and, about And as that. I said, uh, Manuel Lopez, he represents DLA Piper, and he is an excellent expert. He will be here today. You can ask a lot of questions. Uh, Margaret and Jaime, they have both seen a lot of the people that have moved to Puerto Rico. As I said, the most important thing is not the money that they bring, it's the talent and the unique. Uh, so it's very powerful. A little island that has received almost 2,000 new residents, all top people. But one detail, we're not talking uh, of the uh, hedge funds, owners only. We're talking of young people that are in technology, in blockchain, uh, in, in different uh, software development that can be done from Puerto Rico, research. Uh, just to uh, each one of, of you, an anecdote of, of some of the people that, that you have sold properties uh, in Puerto Rico without names, but just of the interesting people that have moved to Puerto well, Rico. Uh, Vidak, my, being a musician, I'm sure uh, you're, you know what auto-tune is. Uh, auto-tune is all what, you know, thanks to Andy Hildebrand, who was the inventor of auto-tune, uh, it's why we have all these rappers and all these uh, singers that we may or may not like, but they've been very successful. <laughs> Yeah, that's an example of someone who moved to Puerto Rico under Act 2022, a great, I mean, uh, genius. Uh, he did not develop out of tune for the music industry. He was actually doing uh, oil exploration for Exxon, you know, 25 years ago when this was a, a uh, uh, one of those mistakes that made him a millionaire. So that's one of, one, one of the people that uh, I can mention that uh, has moved to Puerto Rico uh, in the last couple of years. I think we've we've seen every industry, uh, people who have a, that have um, mail order companies, they have come and set up their operations in Puerto Rico as opposed to going to Asia, Asia and China, it's a nice change. Um, we have industries, pharmaceuticals, which are traditional, uh, financial services, but apart from that, we've had a very big move recently, um, blockchain, people, young blockchain people setting up uh, their hub in the old city. And so all of these people that are coming are coming with great energy. And they're uh, recharging Puerto Rico. You will go in San Juan in the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. You'll see all your joggers, your bikers. Uh, that could be New York City. It could be uh, Boston. could be anywhere else. You feel the energy. And all these people are coming in so many different industries. I, had, I was never aware of uh, medical hedge funds, not something that I was familiar with. We've had that industry come to Puerto Rico buying up medical schools in Puerto Rico. So there really, really is any type of industry that you are able to operate um, either in, the, in Puerto Rico itself by hiring and, and creating these jobs, a lot of marketers, uh, online marketing that have set up presence with two, three hundred uh, employees on the island. It's very, very exciting. And Manuel, I, I am in the board of one of your clients, uh, an international bank. Uh, but would you, you like to share an interesting client that have recently gone to Puerto Rico? Well, actually, when you mention international bank, um, Puerto Rico has its international banking law with um, incentives also. Jose Sosa, who is one of my partners, who is our expert there, has been telling me that um, that is another area that has been growing, but really quickly. A lot of investors from not only United States, Europe, even South America are setting up international banks in Puerto Rico. And believe me, it's, it's following the trend that you're mentioning in the sense that um, Puerto Rico is now becoming to be discovered 
by different parts of the world. And uh, this is the moment to really start making a lot of noise. And on that side, on the International Bank, um, 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 Baco, we're seeing a lot of movement. Jose can add to that maybe later on as you, as you meet him. But believe me, there's a lot going on in Puerto Rico. And one thing that I can uh, just add to this experience thing, every time I met clients from the East Coast, when they think about a tropical island, and again, this is kind of consistent, they think about Hawaii. We should become the Hawaii of, of the East Coast. Yeah. That's Definitely. All. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.